our Father, for this day. Thank you for this week again. We have we have lived in your blessings. Lord, we thank you for this evening. You have provided us time to be in your presence, to fellowship with you. Lord, we ask that you will speak us through your word, that we might know you more, that we might see the power of your resurrection. We might be we may comfortable Lord, with uh, we desire your sufferings, Lord, that we might truly know you, not just to hear about you, not just hear that some people have lived with you, but ourselves to know you. Reveal, we ask that you reveal new things about yourself through your word tonight, that we might see your function through us into this dark world. Thank you, Lord. We praise your name and we praise you. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. By the grace of God, the Holy Spirit has been speaking expressly to us from first timothy chapter 3 verse 16 and without controversy great is the mystery of godliness god was manifest in the flesh god justified in the spirit god was seen of the angels god was preached unto the gentiles god was believed on in the world and god was received up into glory and painstakingly, the Spirit of the Lord has been interpreting each of the pillars of this mystery of godliness to us. We've gone through the first pillar that God was manifest in the flesh. And each of the pillars cannot stand by itself. They are so interconnected. So as we try to go to another pillar of the mystery of godliness, the Holy Spirit will take us back to the first pillar, to the second pillar, as the case may be. So we see that all through the six pillars, depending on when the Holy Spirit helps us to complete the study. And for the past few weeks, we have been on the third pillar. God was seen of angels. And the Spirit of God has taken us through a tangent of the context of this third pillar, seen of angels. We have seen prayer as a secret, a secret weapon intertwined interspersed in the mystery of godliness. We have also seen sleep as a, an enemy to the mystery of godliness. Then we have also seen an angelic oversight to the mystery of godliness. But then again, we are coming now back to this pillar of the mystery of godliness. God was seen of the angels. That's the third pillar. So we have been introduced into it. We've had part one. And today we are looking at part two. God was seen of the angels as part of the mystery of godliness. This is something the Bible calls great. This is something the Bible calls controversial. This is something the Bible calls a mystery, which means it is eating, it is great, it is full of controversy. And this thing that has been kept from the foundation of the world up to the time the church came to being, must have been so precious because it just tells the program of God for mankind. The Bible says Jesus was crucified before the foundation of the world. That means the mystery of godliness had been prepared before the world was formed. Because if Jesus had been crucified before the foundation of the world, it does mean that the crucifixion has been seen, has been witnessed by God the Father. So also, his glorification has been witnessed by God the Father. That's why the Bible says, because of the joy that was set ahead of him. How did he know? He has seen it. He is God by himself. And he endured the cross. So he has written the manuscript. He just came to act out the play. Isn't that interesting? And so we are now focused today on God was seen of the angels. And Jesus, who was part of God before the ages was formed, who became flesh because of man, understood what it means for God to be seen of the angels. In fact, Jesus preached it. Jesus announced it as an evidence that someone has made a right decision. Come to think of that. John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Johanny Epos read. John chapter 1 verse 49 to 51. But our focus is in verse 51. Nathanael answered and said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the son of God. 
thou art the king of Israel. Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou, thou shalt see greater things than these. And he said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter you shall see heaven open, and the angel of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Look at this. Jesus, who became flesh, and God became flesh. So let us understand, not just Jesus <laughs> becoming flesh, it was God that became flesh. That God that became flesh told Nathanael a reality to expect. The God that became flesh produced a statement that no human being has ever made. God that became flesh told Nathanael, oh, because I told you that I saw you under a fig tree, is that why you are so full of amazement? In verse 49, Nathanael answered, thou art the son of God, thou art the king of Israel. The simple information that Jesus gave to Nathanael, that while you were, before Philip called you, behold, you are an Israelite, indeed the womb is no God. That's John chapter 1 verse 47. Before Philip called you, I have seen you under a fig tree. That revelation of, let's like see, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, that is word of knowledge. The ability to know things that actually does exist. God that became flesh spoke to Nathanael and said, I have seen you under a fig tree. Nathaniel recognized that it is only the Son of God that can speak like this. What does that tell us? It tells us that divine revelation, when it comes to the right audience, it creates a manner of worship. Divine revelation, when it comes to the right audience, they do not argue, they bow and worship. The Pharisees were wrong audiences. They always attack and fight the revelation of Jesus. If we have the lifestyle, if we have the constituents, if we have the perception, if we have the same mind like Nathaniel, in whom there is no God, and we receive a revelation from Jesus, when we receive a revelation from the Son of God that became flesh, our response is very important. How do we respond? We respond by worshiping, by bowing. But then that is not the real issue. Why Nathaniel lifted up his voice and let out a very potent message, an eternal statement, because here, 2,000 years later, we are still reading this very statement. Nathaniel said, Thou hast the son of God. Do you know it took a longer time for Peter to say the same thing? Nathaniel, on the very first day he saw Jesus, as a result of connection with divine revelation, he produced what the Spirit of God needed to tell Peter much later, maybe up to one year or two years later, before Peter was able to say, Jesus said, who do men say that I am? And Peter said, you are Christ, the Son of God. He and Nathaniel said it on the very first day of meeting Jesus. We should position ourselves like Nathaniel. But then, if Nathaniel was able to reveal by the utterance he made the person of Jesus as the Son of God, it does tell us that we also, we have to come to a recognition of the reality of that same Son of God by mingling with divine revelation. Divine revelation is not given in the school of theology. It's not given by men who were taught by men. Divine revelation is inspired by God himself. It is a dose, a part of God, a perfume, a fragrance of divinity that enters the mind of man and causes man to speak truth as it is in eternity. That's divine revelation. And wherever that divine revelation comes, it produces worship. And so when Jesus saw the response, the acceptance from Nathanael, Jesus went further and revealed to Nathanael 
an aspect of the mystery of godliness. Do we realize that when Nathaniel made that statement, thou art, he was talking to a man standing before him that looks like him. Of course, he may not understand the mysteries and the intricacies of his flesh, but he has the form of a man. The Bible says he had the form of a man. And he said that man that has this form is not just a brother, a village colleague. He's not just a neighbor. This one in particular is the son of the living God. And Jesus said unto him, because I said this, because I said this, that I saw you under a fig tree, believest thou, look at something here, faith is produced by divine revelation. The first thing is worship. The Bible says the father is seeking such who will worship him. For those that will worship him, we worship him in spirit and in truth. Nathaniel had just released an eternal truth. Thou art the son of God. This was a man of worship. Rabbi, Rabbi, thou art the son of God. Thou art the king of Israel. Look at that. Worship. Recognition of a king produces a response. What response? Prostration. We fall down and worship a king. And these two terms came out of the mouth of Nathanael. And Jesus said, not only is this a pattern of worship, but that he actually believed. Revelation produced faith. Faith comes by what? By hearing. Not hearing the letters. You see, many people go to churches. They listen to the same story, but they go back in their sicknesses and diseases and bondages. And it's just like the stories of the many years ago, like tales that have been told. But there is another story that is produced by the Spirit of God that looks at the same story of Zacchaeus, the woman with the issue of blood, and why that story is being told, the same story. The Spirit of God transformed those letters into life. And those life coming out of those same Bible stories, they come in confrontation with the heart of man and something happened. Faith is born. And here Jesus told Nathanael, he said, because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Before a man can say, oh, thou art the son of God, thou art the king of Israel, to somebody that he has never seen before, is an indication of faith. He believes that this person is not just normal. This is not just my neighbor. This is not just one of those strangers I do meet. This is not just a prophet. This is not a priest. This is the son of God. Do you know, this is where we are going. That is just introduction. This is where we are going. Jesus said, look at that. After Nathaniel had exemplified, had displayed a manner of worship, a recognition of the deity of Jesus, his mission, Nathaniel went further to also display faith that Jesus recognized, believest thou, on the basis of these two things, worship and faith. Jesus unveiled a part of the mystery of godliness to Nathanael. And look at how Jesus said it. The end of verse 50 says, Believest thou, thou shalt see. Look at the term there. Greater things than these. You look at the word he used. Greater things than these. Remember, the Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. Jesus told Nathanael, thou shalt see greater things than these. Let's pause a little. What can be greater than the revelation of the words of knowledge? What can be greater than the spirit of prophecy? What can be greater than the gift of the Holy Spirit being manifested before Nathaniel? Nathaniel received an information where Jesus was staying somewhere else. And Jesus said, I saw you where you are. So apparently, Jesus could see what Nathaniel was doing, even though physically they were not in the same place. Those are manifestation of the gift of the Spirit. 
And Jesus, when he was coming, said, Behold, an Israelite indeed in whom there is no God. Jesus was able to discern his spirit. So we see the workings of the words of knowledge, the discernment of spirit, and also the prophecy, the gift of prophecy. Thou shalt see foretelling what Natalia will experience in the future. Thou shalt see greater things. We also see the word of faith. Believers thou, Natalia was experiencing the dimensions of the gifts of the Spirit. And yet, if all of those things, they pale into insignificance when we look at it and contrast it with what Jesus was to say next. Jesus told Nathanael, those things are wonderful. You have worshipped, you have bowed, you have recognized me as the Savior, as the Master, as the King of Israel. He is the coming King, as the Lord, the Son of the living God. But then thou shalt see greater things. The question is, what then can be greater than the manifestation of the gift of the Spirit? What then can be more mightier, more glorious? than the manifestation of the gift of the Spirit. We do think that the ultimatum, the ultimatum, the highest level to reach is to say, oh, I want to manifest the gift of the Spirit in my life. I want to see the workings of the gift of the Spirit. People are looking for signs and wonders. Somebody should tell you, oh, I saw you under a fig tree. Call your phone numbers, your date of birth, your father's name, your whatever ATM card number. Many, many manifestations of the prophetic that people are looking for today. Is there something greater than that? Yes. Is that all there is in Christianity to be able to speak some certain word of knowledge and speak some words of wisdom and the gift of faith and healing and miracle and signs and wonders? Can there be something greater than that? Jesus made a profound statement that Nathaniel has never imagined or heard existed before. Jesus said, believest thou? That means to go into the realm of the great things. Faith is non-negotiable. To enter into the dimension of the revelation of greater things, we have to build upon the faith that we have prior to that time. Nathaniel did not start receiving the information of great things from Jesus until he was able to do something with the smaller things so to speak, in quote. When Nathaniel responded appropriately, Jesus gave that revelation to Nathaniel and he was waiting for Nathaniel's response. Because Nathaniel responded appropriately, Jesus had no other reason not to hide the mystery anymore. Because faith, a display of faith, give God the glory. The just shall live by faith. Anywhere faith is manifested, anywhere there is a belief on the Son of God, it provoked God to unveil the mystery of godliness. And Jesus saw that. Remember, this was not the first person who saw Jesus. This was not the first person. Disciples of John, including Andrew, they've been with Jesus. They say, come and show, and show us where you are living. Yes. And Jesus took them to the house. And Andrew went to look for Simon Peter and brought him. And Jesus said, thou are Cephas, stone. If you go back to verse 41, he first finded his own brother Simon. Verse 40, one of the two which heard Jesus, John speak and followed Jesus was Andrew. So some people had actually followed Jesus. But none of them received what Nathaniel received. There was something about the disposition of Nathaniel that was different. And everything Nathaniel encountered, it had to take the whole of three and a half years for Andrew and Peter to experience the same thing. One man encountered everything in one day. How and why? Worship and faith. An Israeli womb, there is no God. Can you imagine that? And so Jesus told this man, thou shalt see greater things. Now, the question is, will he see this while he's alive? Will he see it after he has died? What then does this sight actually imply? One thing is this. If Jesus said, thou shalt see greater things, it means the person has not seen it before. There is no need to promise somebody a sight of what he or she has seen before. So all the things that Nathaniel had seen up to the time Jesus made this statement were considered as less in quality compared to the next thing he's going to reveal in verse 51. Mm. Thou shalt see greater things. Thou shalt see greater things. And then in verse 51, he took us into the dimension of the greater things. 
And he said unto him, Verily, verily, truthfully, truthfully, assuredly, assuredly, without any iota of doubt, undoubtedly, certainly, I speak to you the old truth by two immutable things. It is impossible for God to lie. God is not a man that he should lie, neither is he the son of man that he should repent. At his said, and shall he not make it good? At he spoken, and shall he not bring it to pass? Verily, verily, I say unto you, this is the word that became flesh. He said, hereafter, ye shall see heaven open. Hereafter, ye shall see heaven open. And the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. What is the meaning of this? And he said unto him, this is the greater thing that Jesus was talking about. God knows how Nathaniel's face changed to this kind of information. Probably Nathaniel suddenly looked, suddenly looked at the sky and was looking for the open heavens. But Jesus gave a dimension. Expect in the hereafter. The hereafter means after the experience you have just had now, there is something greater I want you to pursue. You have had all that is possible at this point. You have revealed me as a son of the living God. There is something greater than this. And after this experience, this is the next thing you should pursue. This is the next thing you should look forward to. This is what you should begin to pant after. Ye shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Great is the mystery of godliness. God was seen of the angels. In other words, Jesus was speaking to Nathaniel that the gift of the Spirit is not as great as the mystery of godliness. Amazing. The gift of the Spirit is not as great as the mystery of godliness. Does this not surprise us? And Jesus was speaking about the third pillar. Ye shall see heaven open. If we have faith and believed that he is the son of God, he is the king of Israel, here is the promise of Jesus to us. Let's put ourselves in the shoes of Nathanael. And Jesus now speaking to us. And Jesus saying, hereafter ye shall see heaven open. Imagine Jesus saying that to us now. Hereafter you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. What does that mean? How do we interpret this? Is this talking of the present time? Is it talking of eternity? When we are all going to be with God? What is he talking about? Briefly, I would say he's not talking about eternity. Because in eternity, angels don't ascend and descend. They are all in glory. There is only one place to descend. You can descend from heaven. You can ascend in heaven. Yes. When Satan wanted to ascend above the throne of God, something happened to him. Is that true? Nobody ascend from heaven. There's only one direction from heaven. is descent. But when we are on earth, there's a possibility to ascend and descend. Yes, we ascend from earth to heaven and from heaven to earth. So it is only on earth that ascension and descension is possible. In heaven, ascension is not possible. There's only descension. So, which means this scripture is telling Nathaniel that look, you will see something on earth and what you are going to see is the ministration, the angelic dimension. Angels walking with the Son of Man. And we have been looking at it a little, little by little. While he was in the garden, angels came and strengthened him while he was praying. What was that? That was a descent. An angel descended from heaven. Here after you shall see. Here after you shall see. While after he had finished fasting and praying and he was hungry and he overcame the temptation of Satan, the Bible says angels came and ministered to him. Here after you shall see. These were physical experiences of Jesus Christ while he was the son of man on earth. 
And this is what the scripture means. Angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Do you know there was a shadow of this experience? And that was Jacob in the Old Testament. While he was sleeping on a rock, he was not in heaven. He was on earth. He saw a ladder from heaven to earth. And angels ascending and descending. See, that is the direction. It has, that, that, it has to be earth. Someone has to be on earth for angels to ascend and descend. Angels don't ascend in glory. No, no. God is the top. <laughs> you can't ascend beyond that. Every other thing proceeds from him, so you can only go down. And here, Jesus was telling Nathaniel, Nathaniel will go home, turning on his mattress because of the dose of the greatness of this mystery. It has taken many years for the church to come to an understanding that there is a greater dimension than the workings of the gift of the Spirit. It is simply the mystery of godliness. As Paul the Apostle came, after he has gone into the third heavens and come back, Paul began to write certain things. Paul said without controversy, because Paul has been has mingled with the revelation that Nathaniel mingled with. And Paul said, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. And he began to tell us the component of that mystery. God became flesh. God was justified in the spirit. God was seen of the angels. God was preached on to the Gentiles. God was believed on in this world. And God was taken up into glory. Without controversy. And just out of those six pillars, Jesus gave Nathanael one of those. And Jesus called it, thou shalt see greater things. So today we will look at another aspect, one of those greater things that Jesus promised Nathaniel to see hereafter. That is after now, after my discussion with you, this is the expectation you should have, the reality of an open heaven. And I tell you, that heaven is still open till today because that heaven actually opened when God became flesh. That was the first descent. It was God that opened that heaven and he came into the womb of a woman. God Almighty descended from the throne and entered into a woman's womb. That had to leave heaven open. Do you know John the Baptist experienced an open heaven while he was baptizing Jesus? He said that the heaven was open. It's still opened. And the dove descended. Jesus had penetrated and gaped a hole in the firmament that cannot be seen with the physical eyes that permit angels to ascend and descend every time because the son of man because God has become flesh the mighty hand of God the glory of God, the God that we cannot see with the naked eye became a flesh that men can touch and so Jesus released this information and this revelation to Nathanael. Hereafter, ye shall see heaven open. And the angels of God, now not just one angel. The last time Jesus said, I can presently pray the Father, who will send 12 legions of angels, which is more or less 72,000 angels at this point in time. And if one angel was able to kill more than 185,000 soldiers in the Old Testament, how many will 72,000 have killed? If there is a war between angels and men, that means billions of angels, 72,000, 12 legions, will just be available to destroy humanity. But Jesus told Peter, we can't do this. How will the scripture be fulfilled? But here Jesus said, thou shalt see heaven open. Because of the reality of an open heaven, the premise of the pillar, the third pillar in the mystery of godliness is possible. Because of an open heaven, because of an open heaven, the third pillar in the mystery of godliness is true. Ye shall see heaven open. An open heaven has a fact for the third pillar in the mystery of godliness. An open heaven, an open heaven as a fact to the third pillar in the mystery of godliness. That is today's topic. An open heaven as a fact to the mystery, to the third pillar in the mystery of godliness. Johanny, you can speak of. Mm -hmm. From verse 50 and 51, we have come to, when we have unraveled these, a whole spirit has unraveled us to this mystery, mystery of godliness by layer or layer, like peeling an onion. Just like Nathaniel, like in verse 50, Jesus said that, believest, uh, because 
because I said under the, I saw the under the tree, believe stuff. Those all see greater things. So he had seen, believed that Jesus is the son of God, that he had seen Jesus is the son of God. So he had come to see, perceive this thing. And as Jesus is saying that, I say unto you here, after you shall see heaven open and the angel of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. What the Holy Spirit is doing now, he is opening the eyes, enlightening the eyes of our understanding, opening them little by little to see the reality we are in. It doesn't mean like I could I just physically see the heaven open right now all the time. But our spirit is open to understand to, and to know the reality we are in. And just like in John 8 and 31, it said that you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. If you don't see that we are in bondage, in captivity, how can we be set free? But when we, the truth, we see the truth, we understand it, we actually see that actually there's captivity in my life, there's something keeping me in bondage. And then we will be set free. So all the spirit is opening us to see the realities in the spirit, opening our eyes to see what is happening. Just like in Genesis 13, when Lord was speaking to Abraham, in Genesis chapter 13, verse 14 and 15, God said to Abraham, and the Lord said unto Abraham, after that Lord was separated from him, lift up now thine eyes and look from place where thou art, northward and southward and eastward and westward for all the land which thou seest to thee will i give it and to thy seed forever so as far as we can see lord's possibility as we can see what has been given as far as we can see is ours do we limit ourselves with the thing saying this is my past i cannot go for this is my education level i can't go this is my background i can't go forward this is my way i come for how we do things how i i'm from there no, no one in our family rights no, no in this country how god hasn't been doing much no as far as we can see he will give to us according to his word what he has promised in his word so god is opening our understanding to see mystery of godliness that we want also ourselves to experience to see him manifesting in the flesh see him just be satisfied in us in the spirit see the angels God's was seen of the angels, see the manifestation of angels in the church. We must come to see these realities so we can work in them, because only what we see, he will give to us. Yes. Thank you very much. I will see an example of Paul the Apostle, how he walked in the reality of the things that he saw. Let's keep it at the back of our mind that Jesus was the one that created an open heaven. His descent from heaven kept heaven open. Because it was impossible for God to close the heavens because God was on earth. Yes. He drew heaven open. Why? Because he chose to become flesh. And because he threw heaven open, what happened? That was simply pillar number one. God became flesh. And until he is received up into glory through that same open heaven, the mystery of godliness cannot be completed. So heaven had to remain open. And even though Jesus had returned back to heaven, the heaven cannot be closed. Why? Because he has come to turn many sons into glory. And inasmuch as we have not returned into glory, heaven has to remain open. The only time heaven will close is when there are no more sons that wants to go to glory. He kept heaven open. He opened heaven himself and he began to unveil to Nathanael the mysteries in an open heaven. An open heaven as a fact of the third part of the mystery of godliness. Let's look at an example of a man that had an open heaven experience. Sako, can you help us read 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 to 5? 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 to 5. It is not expedient for me, doubtless to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell. God now such an one caught up to the third heaven, and I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell God knows how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words which it is not lawful for man to utter. Of such and one will I glory. 
glory yet of myself, I will not glory, but in my infirmities. Thank you very much. Look at what Paul is saying. Paul is saying the experience of an open heaven is what should be our boast. We should glory in the reality of the greater things. Paul said, nothing else can be compared with the glory of an open heaven. He said, it is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. I will come to visions and I will come into the revelations of the Lord. An open heaven is not a sky that we look for the stars and the sun and the moon. It's beyond that. Paul said, this matter is a matter of visions and it's a matter of revelation. The revelation is not taught in a seminary. Visions are not conferred by men upon men. No. Paul the Apostle said, I know a man in Christ. That is the producer of the vision. The person talking to Nathaniel was Christ. And he was telling Nathaniel things he had never imagined or thought that has never crossed his mind. Year, year after, you shall see. And year after, we will also see. After today's Bible studies, we will enter into a new dimension of sight. Because we are coming into the reality of an open heaven and we should understand that there are certain things to expect he said i knew a man in christ above 14 years ago whether in the body i cannot tell it is not every time it does happen it may be one in the lifetime of a person it is always a point in time that becomes a reference in the entire scope of that person's work with the Almighty God. That's what the Holy Ghost is saying. Here the Bible says, Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2, I knew a man in Christ, how many years ago? 14 years ago. That means it doesn't happen every night, every day, every weekend. No. 14 years ago, that's a very long time. And Paul said, I can still refer to that experience. That was my open heaven experience. That was my greater things experience. Because the dimensions I entered in that realm, it is not lawful for me to utter it to men. Look at that. I do believe. Those are the languages of angels he has that man cannot comprehend. I do believe that this man went into paradise and heard unspeakable words. That's the language of angels. He was hearing the communication of the angels of God. He had the privilege. He ascended into heaven and came back again. Hmm. Why? Because God had opened the floodgate of heaven for believers. And we should all desire this experience. That what, at least once in a lifetime, we should be able to hear and communicate with the angels. Because it had been given unto us. Year after which I see, the Son of Man had gone. We are the one here. We have learned goodness and mercy shall follow us. We have learned peace and goodwill unto man. Did the angels not descend from heaven? And they came to announce the arrival of the Son of God. They descended from heaven. And the Bible says, and when the angels were gone back to heaven. You see, this is what Nathaniel didn't know. But Jesus had to tell him. Year after you will see it. That it was not a past experience. It is a constant, continuous experience that I, as a son of man, do have. We remember that in Luke, that the angels came and they were singing, peace and goodwill towards men. The Bible says when the angels had finished, the shepherd said, let's go and look for this thing. Let's go and look for this thing. And when they saw it, they bowed down and worshipped. When the angels finished that episode of massive choral, worship, adoration, praising God, blessing God. The Bible says, and they departed back into heaven. That fulfilled that scriptures, that that heaven was already open. Angels ascending and descending. Angels ascending and descending. Angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Do we know that the Son of Man is the bridegroom and the church is his bride? If the angels ascend and descend upon the bridegroom, the angels must ascend and descend upon the bride. A church, a denomination that lacks angelic intervention, interference, interlocution, that church is not a bride because the permission has been granted as a result of open heavens. Paul the Apostle said 14 years ago, whether I was in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. He is speaking as a member of the bride of Christ. 
He had an encounter. An angel had to come and pick him from the surface of the earth and took him out of his body and entered into that vista in glory. And the Bible says he heard something. I knew such a man. How that he was caught up into paradise, into the third heavens. Hereafter we shall see the heavens open. The heaven that was open was not the first heaven. And I see the second heaven or the third heaven where God dwells. How that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words. Information is being passed across in the third heavens. Something is moving like a frequency of a radio but cannot be seen with the naked eye. But when you open your radio set, the transponder receives the transmission and you begin to hear the voice. Proud to that time, your radio is switched off. You can't hear anything. But there are signals of words being spoken in the atmosphere. You can't hear and you can't see. But when you turn on your radio, suddenly you begin to hear a voice. That voice has been speaking, only waiting for you to turn on your radio. And the Holy Ghost is saying, turn on the radio of your life. There are unspeakable words in glory. The angels are ascending and descending upon the bride of Christ, bringing speeches, revelations and visions as it is today. Great is the mystery of godliness. Jesus told Nathanael, you will see greater things. And this is more glorious than the manifestation of the giftings of the spirit that men are looking for. There is a greater dimension when angels ascend and descend upon the Son of Man. Yes, greater dimension, greater glory, greater experience. Paul said, I heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Why is it that it becomes unlawful for a man to utter? Because these are not words of men. These are words of another being, celestial being, not earthly, not terrestrial. He had ability to communicate, to come into conversation with words that men cannot hear. This is the privilege we have, open heaven, as a fact of the third part pillar in the mystery of godliness. We have been granted a scholarship of an open heaven. And that scholarship is that we all together, we must come to revelation and the vision of the Lord. Yes, this is such a thing that we should glory of. We don't glory in the number of souls that were saved. We don't glory in the number of miracles and signs and wonders. We don't glory, glory in the number of how many dead people have been raised. We don't glory in the number of how many cancers have been healed. We don't glory in the number of how many backbones have been healed. We don't glory in the number of how many blind eyes have opened and the deaf have been able to hear and speak. Paul the Apostle said there is one thing to glory about. He said, of such a one will I glory. I'm not going to glory in my infirmities. He has been beaten and smitten and broken and battered by all forms of persecution and trials. He said, that is not my glory. He said, of this one will I glory. Of this one will I glory. Of this one will I glory. Abundance of visions and revelation of the Lord as a result of an opponent. We should glory in a greater mystery. We should glory in this reality that the Holy Spirit is unveiling unto us that as for the bride, and heaven has been opened. As for the bride, we are to see greater things. As for the bride, angelic ascension and descent is permitted. As for the bride, unlawful words, unspeakable words being spoken in the third heavens, they are our privilege. We are privileged to participate in conversations in heaven. Ah, there were many times that Jesus had encounters with the angel. Subsequently, we are going to look at this thing. Hereafter, you shall see heaven open. Hereafter, we shall see heaven open. Let's understand. Nathaniel came into this reality upon the foundation of worship and faith. Jesus said, believest thou, thou shalt see. Do we believe what the Holy Ghost is saying now? If the answer is yes, then I can say, we shall also see. We shall see greater things. 
we can have this experience. Open heavens will become our own Lord. We will be able to glory in the things of the supernatural. We will be able to hear voices of the third heavens and receive revelation of the Lord himself. Not revelations of cow, of cowry, not revelation of a country, not revelation of a people. It is always about the Lord. It is always about him. It is always about the person who opened the heavens. That is what we should glory about. But the apostle now later began to say that I may know him, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering be made conformable unto his death. There is there was something this man had to encounter. And they said, No, these words of life that we have seen with our eyes, our hands have touched, we have heard with our ears, and we have undoed the very word of life, and they began to quote again, verily, verily, I say unto you, there is something that makes a believer not to backslide. And we come to the vision and the revelation of the Lord. You can only deny somebody you have not found. You can only deny somebody you have not seen. You can only deny somebody that you have not heard a voice. But when men come into an experience of an open heaven, where Jesus becomes the ladder through which angels ascend and descend, on the basis of that, we can say this, I have seen, I have heard, I have touched the very word of life. How transformational, how this turns our lives around and makes us realize that we are not following cunningly devised fables. But we are making known, we are revealing the things that we ourselves have experienced. This was what made the apostles apostles. They came into the visions of the Lord. They came into the revelation of the Lord. And church, we have been given this tremendous privilege. We have been granted an open heaven. Have we ever utilized it? Do we think it's necessary to pursue it? Are we even interested in experiencing an open heaven? Do we think it is something to wait until we all enter into glory? But why? Should we have Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 to 5 inscriptions? If it should not be something that we should desire, we also should have our own 14 years ago experience where we are cut off from this world into paradise, into the visions of the Lord. First, we are going to use the principle of Nathaniel. Nathaniel had simple word of knowledge, simple visions and spirit of revelation. Given unto him, Nathaniel worshipped. Nathaniel cried and said, Thou art the Son of God. Thou art the King of Israel. Let's begin to praise the name of the Lord because I know of a surety we have come into the same experience with Nathaniel. We recognize Jesus as the Son of God. We know assuredly there is no other God but Christ. There is no other Savior but Jesus. There is no other King but our Lord who died and gave himself on the cross. Let's begin to lift our voice and worshiping in appreciation in adoration of e crafting an open heaven on our behalf creating a possibility for god to come and dine with men and men can have interaction and communion and colonia with the god of heaven it is a mighty privilege if we believe that we have experienced this and we continue to have an experience of this. Let's give him praise. Let's worship him. Let's thank the Lord. Let's magnify his holy name. Let's bless him. Mighty God, glorious God, eternal Father, we give you all the glory because you are God, because you are mighty, you are glorious, you are excellent, you are majestic. You are awesome. You are great. No rava suta kali muhasi gavai. Enthe no te kunta lasiki tu ne maraka biya tu nanda vasahaya. Thou art the Son of God. Thank you for the revelation of the past. Thank you for the visions of the past. Thank you for the inspiration of the past. Thank you for the Holy Ghost inspired utterance of the past. 
past. Thank you for the wounds of interpretation of knowledge, of the gift of tongues and interpretation. Thank you for the spirit of prophecy. Thank you for the word of knowledge and word of wisdom. Thank you for the gift of faith. Let's bless the name of the Lord for the previous experiences. Let's thank him because mighty one of Zion has descended upon us and come to unveil unto us the mystery, the dimensions of the mysteries of his godliness. He took all of God to create an open heaven. He took everything that God had at his disposal to shatter the glass ceiling of the universe and created a path where angels can ascend and descend. Let's bless God because as a result of that possibility, we are saved. Our names are written in the book of life. We have the assurance that we are children of God. Let's bless God for the same reason that Nathaniel worshipped. Jesus said, thou believest, you will see greater things. Let's bless God for the spirit of faith. The Bible says, having therefore the same spirit of faith, we believe, therefore we speak. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Let's thank God for this faith that God is already giving unto us, impacting our heart by the word of God. Let's bless God because we are growing from faith to faith. We are increasing our faith in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, coming into the revelation and the reality of what heaven has prepared for us in this last day. Let's bless God. Let's magnify Jesus. Let's extol his holy name. There are many things that Jesus did that were not written. But the few that are written are sufficient for us to develop and build enormous faith. Let's bless our God. Let's bless God, Nathaniel. Thank you, Father, for different revelations at different points in time. Thank you for the mystery that you have unveiled unto us. Thank you for the glory that we have seen in the past. Thank you, Father. Makunte kento lezikruz kotai. Emne pa wakunda leiskivas. Rehum matenda vile surasa katuna malitenda maiko humshia. I believe that we are praying. I believe we are calling upon the name of the Lord. It is a great opportunity to be in the same position like Nathaniel. Jesus said, in whom there is no God. And Israel light indeed is the Holy Ghost saying in whom there is no God, a child of God in here. But yet, there is a greater dimension. There is a greater glory because we have the privilege. The heavens have been opened already. Let's begin now to begin to pray and say, Lord, an encounter an experience of an open heaven. Heaven have been thrown open for the bride of Christ to enter into the visions of the Lord. Heaven have been Throat open for the bride of Christ to enter into divine revelation. Heaven have been thrown open for the church to live, to exist, to depend upon inspiration from glory. Enough of all kinds of mental gymnastics. Enough of all kinds of theological argument that does not profit. Enough of all kinds of mental knowledge in the, sem in the seminary. It is time for the revelations of the Lord. It is time to hear unspeakable word that it is not lawful for men to hear of such things we like glory. What is our glory? What are we glorying about? Are we glorying about the mystery of God in the third pillar that God was seen of the angels? Do the angels now do ascend and descend upon us? Do they grant us divine revelation? Do the angels bring manifestation of his power into our lives? Do you know that they are ministry spirit to do who are heirs of salvation? Do you know the angels have an obligation towards you on a daily basis, 24 hours, seven days? Do you know that they do not sleep, they do not slumber? Do you know as the member of the bride of Christ, the heavens remain open for angels to ascend and descend? 
bringing unto us souvenirs from glory. Of such a thing, we must glory. Of such an experience, we must glory. Of such an encounter, we must glory. Let's begin to pray and say, Lord, we want to come into more of the visions of the Lord. We want to come into more of the experience of the open heavens. We want to have the establishment of the third pillar, the mystery of godliness in our own life, in the church of the living God. Let's pray for our lives and let's use the church of Christ as a point of contact and begin to call upon God and say, now upon the church, from one nation to another, let there be an encounter with divine revelation. Let there be an experience of an open heaven. Let the angels of the Lord ascend and descend upon the members of the body of Christ. Many are sleeping. Many are confused. Many are eating and playing. Many do not understand the gravity, the greatness, the glory that lies within the mystery of godliness. Many are just living just like a very, many normal, normal earthly fellow. Many people don't understand that a provision has been made for our glory. And our glory begins here. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Let's begin to pray for an awakening in the body of Christ. An awakening in the church from Asia to America to Europe to Africa to Australia to the Middle East, everywhere to the Antarctic to Greenland. The revelation of the mystery of the glory of God. The heavens have been opened. There is no excuse not to live on an open heaven. The heavens have been opened. The angels of the Lord are sending and descending upon the Son of Man. It is tonight our experience as Nathaniel had his own experience. You shall see hereafter. You shall see hereafter. Holy Ghost, open our eyes that we may see. Take away the veil of religion. Take away the veil of denominationalism. Take away the veil of every form of fleshly desires, every form of fleshly attention. Take it away. Help us to see, to come to revelation, into the visions of the Lord. For this heaven has been opened already. I know no man in the flesh. All the apostles said, in the slow the in the vene John the beloved said, I was in the spirit on the last day, and I heard a voice behind me. All had the same experience. John the beloved had the same experience. Peter had the same experience. They had an encounter with angelic descent. Angels brought unclean beasts to Peter while he was while he fell into a trance and told him to rise, kill, and eat. And that vision we have to sheet was returned back into heaven. A descent and an ascent. Mama kuka kuka lava vata for the deliverance of the gospel to the Gentiles. Look at how it happens. Angelic visitation, angelic intervention, angelic revelation produces a supernatural. It is our time to glory what lasts in eternity. This is how we can become great. This is how we can sit with those who are great. This is how we can walk in the greatness of our God. The provision has been made for us. This as virga huska tiny bezone vata. Year after you shall see. Year after we all shall see. Year after we all together shall see. We shall see the glory of the Lord. The angels are rising and descending upon the Son of Man as he pertains to us and to everything that concerns us. Uka uka si libazi. Reku tele givanta kuruka skuwa. And do name Martina Caruca Zali Basido, Real Catene Meluke Racuaca Patani Basilia. Thank you, Lord, for this revelation. Thank you that you have enlightened our eyes that we can see, Lord. Thank you that you will take us to these universes. Thank you that you will, we can see open heaven so we can see the realities that you have opened us through your son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, through this thing, as the scriptures, they that know their God shall be strong and do express. 
So when we see you, we, and when we know you, we will be strong and do exploits. And thank you, Lord, that we will see a mighty revival in the church, in your church, in the pride of Christ, in your body, so that the body will bring the gospel to every nation and every place, because the body will know the pride through the body will know their God. Be strong and do exploits in the name of Jesus Christ.